Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be starting a new series of Hack the Box machines. Um, and these are gonna be boxes that are very similar to uh, OSCP exam machines. Now I'll uh, put the uh, I'll put the list um, right over here on the screen um, so you guys can check it out. Um, but basically this list of boxes are, um, you know, just boxes that have been uploaded by the community to hack the box that are going to be very similar um, to machines that you might see on the exam. And I think this is good for a couple reasons. One, to provide some transparency um, onto how difficult you can expect the OSCP to be. Um, I know back when I was in college, I looked at the OSCP like this insurmountable monster. Um, and, you know, it was a very hidden behind a lot of secrecy. So, you know, you might not necessarily uh, really understand how difficult the exam might be. Um, and this series might one, teach you a lot of things that you might learn through the OSCP course, um, but also you can kind of judge uh, the difficulty of the exam and uh, how it's formatted through this series. Uh, and two, this will help you learn a lot of those same uh, skills and techniques um, that you might learn through the OSCP coursework. Anyways, um, but today we're going to start out with the box called Lame, uh, and uh, we will jump right into it. Over in the virtual machine, um, the first thing that we're going to do is create a uh, nmap directory inside uh, this directory that I've created uh, specifically for this machine. Um, that will just store the output of our nmap scans. Um, so what we can do now is we can go ahead and launch um, an nmap scan. We're going to use uh, minus capital P lowercase n to block um, the ping sweep because we know that it's there. Um, we'll do lowercase s capital V and C together. Um, you can kind of scrunch that capital or the lowercase s um, capital V lowercase s capital C. You can just kind of all combine it together into lowercase s capital V capital C. Uh, that will run service version enumeration and then standard scripts against all identified services. Um, and then we can just paste in the IP address um, and then we'll do lowercase o capital G. Um, I just tab completed, but I'll explain the rest here. Lowercase o capital G um, and then we're going to save our output to N uh, the nmap directory and then name it lame. That lowercase o capital G is going to output um, this lame file into a greppable format. That way if we need to go back um, and look for a specific, uh, say, service version, um, we can just grep this lame file and grep it for, uh, I don't know, say SSH. Um, we can grep SSH from the file really quick, find the service version, um, find everything super fast. That's a little trick I found from the PWK course. Um, so just kind of staying with the theme here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and let this, um, this scan run and I will jump back with you guys in one second once it's finished. Okay, welcome back guys. This script, uh, or this scan just finished running. Um, let's go ahead and check the output here. So the first um, port and service that are gonna be open is 21 in FTP, which is standard. Um, we wanna take note of this version number. Um, there might be uh, a potential tax surface for that specific version. Um, another thing that I found uh, very interesting that I just noticed right off the top of my head here um, was this anonymous login is allowed. So that way we can just log in as the anonymous user, see if there's anything in that directory, um, and then potentially pull files down from that directory. It also looks like SSH is going to be open here. Um, so that is one thing to keep in mind. We could potentially use this um, as a way to privilege escalate maybe. Um, SSH usually isn't our first attack vector um, since it doesn't seem like there's anything else where we could really scrape credentials from. So maybe this could either be a uh, last hope, maybe brute force credentials into SSH, or we could use this um, for um, privilege escalation like I just mentioned. So we'll kind of set SSH to the side. Um, two interesting ports that you'll see in combination with one another here is 139 and 445. That's gonna be NetBIOS and SMB. Um, so this is probably running some type of network shares um, that are open to the network, hopefully. Um, but uh, it looks like we have Samba version 3.0.2. Um, and then we can see if any of the script information came anything back. Uh, we have the donation domain name, we have a fully qualified domain name, um, we got the system time, uh, it doesn't really look like there's a whole lot else for that SMB output, so maybe we'll just kind of set that to the side and see if there's anything in this FTP service. 
um, to begin with. One thing to keep in note when you first uncover something like this, guys, is how you might be able to chain these exploits together. So one thing that I'm thinking of is if we potentially use this anonymous login um, on FTP, we might be able to find credentials that would allow us to get into a share on this SMB host. Um, that's just one thing off the top of my head but uh, we'll kind of go down in the pecking order here and attack FTP first since we know that there's anonymous login enabled. So to do that, we'll just do FTP and then the IP address. Once the name prompts us for it, we'll type in anonymous. Um, you just have to spell anonymous correctly. And then once it prompts you for the password, you hit the enter key um, and we have a successful anonymous login here. So we'll do LS. Uh, doesn't look like there's anything um, in this directory. If we do lsla, it'll give us um, permissions and hidden files as well. And it doesn't look like anything is here. Um, you can tell that by the 65534, which is the permissions number. Um, so we'll pretty much be stuck in this directory where there's nothing that nothing exists in. Um, so this isn't really uh, anything to note here. Um, so we'll just go ahead and exit out of this. Um, the next port that was open was SSH, um, but like I said, that's kind of a last ditch effort um, to attack SSH. So unless we already have credentials, which we don't, um, so that will be now set to the side. Um, and then going down the list, the next thing that we had was SMB. Um, one tool that I found uh, in the Pen200 or PWK course um, for SMB enumeration was SMB Map. Uh, and it does a lot of the legwork for us, gives us some of the really critical information that we might be looking to find, um, just kind of all in one single command. We don't have to sit there and chain SMB client commands together. Um, so we'll run SMB Map, uh, and I'll be back again with you guys in one second once this is done running. Um, one thing to note, you just need to do a flag capital H uh, and then provide the IP address. The flag capital H just denotes that this is the host that we're scanning um, and then you can hit enter. This should give us um, some enumeration of the SMB shares um, and we'll see what we can turn up. I'll be back again with you guys in one second. Okay, so we're back, this finished scanning, and we got some really cool information here. So this is probably going to be our initial attack point. As you can see, there's um, a lot of stuff that turned up. Um, one thing that we can see uh, is that there's two directories here that are different than the others. Um, this dollar sign at the end means that it's restricted to administrator access. Um, and then if it doesn't have a dollar sign at the end, it means it can be accessed by regular user privileges. So these two are immediately things that we might want to look into. Um, except for this opt directory um, has no access where the TMP or temporary directory has read write access and it even has a comment of oh no's which is uh, a huge uh oh um, and that's probably where we're going to want to focus most of our energy to is this TMP directory. Now one thing to note here is that we don't have um, user credentials um, for this TMP directory. Even though um, it's open here, uh, it still needs uh, user account uh, credentials to log into it. So when you don't have a user account credential, um, this has essentially eliminated all of our other options. We don't have user ac account credentials, um, and this is pretty much the only thing that's open because that FTP um, is pretty much closed SSH with, you know, we have a one in a million chance of getting um, credentials on that SSH thing. So I think we're gonna focus our energy on this TMP. Now, once it seems like all those other options are exhausted, what we can do is we can use search exploit to potentially see if there's an exploit associated with the service version of uh, Samba that's running on this machine. Um, so what we can do is we'll do search, um, search exploit. Um, and then we'll do Samba, and we did, we had 3.0.2 um, star. Whoops, not star. So um, we can see, uh, based on this top one here, it looks like there is one result matching what we want, um, and it is this, um, it's this Metasploit module. Now, one thing about the OSCP exam is that you're not allowed to use Metasploit. Um, and that's so that you just don't plug in a couple numbers here um, and just automatically get a root shell on a machine. Um, it kind of makes you work a little bit more. You need to use some publicly available information. Um, you can't rely on Metasploit. It's 
banned on the exam. So uh, following the theme of the series here, we're not going to use Metasploit. We're going to exploit this slightly more manually. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to find um, where this um, where this exploit is stored on our machine. Um, so we'll cat that out. Um, and what we're gonna do is you could maybe see here, I've already kind of ran through this, but um, we're going to grep for the CVE number, see if there's a CVE associated with this exploit. Usually that um, if there's a uh, command execution vulnerability, um, that's gonna be associated with a CVE. So let's go ahead and see if we can find the CVE um, and uh, go from there. So we're gonna cat this from uh, the user share. Um, it's gonna be an exploit uh, DB. Um, it's gonna be in the exploits folder. And then you can just grab the rest of the path from straight from there. Um, so we'll paste that in. Um, and then we're gonna do a space, a pipe, and then we're gonna grep for CVE. And as you can see, we have this um, CVE number and we also have a URL. Um, so we could just jump straight to this URL um, and see if we can get any additional information about what's going on. Um, let's do that really quick um, and see what this is all about. So it looks like there is um, a configuration option which is not enabled by default um, and it can cause for um, essentially remote code execution. So let's see since there's not a lot um, on the Samba or on the Samba website, um, let's see if we can search for that CVE number um, in Google and see if there's any other public publicly available exploits that we could use um, to go through with this. So we'll go CVE 2007 2447. Um, it looks like there's one, there's an article on it from MITRE. Um, NIST is also going to have description. Um, one thing that I was looking for, um, you can see I've already clicked on it, um, but uh, anytime you see GitHub, you're probably going to find um, a publicly available exploit. So I already looked through this one. This is what we're going to be using. Um, and uh, we will uh, pull this down and uh, set this up on our machine. Um, and I will be back again with you guys in one second once this gets uh, set up here. Okay, so as you guys can see, um, I've already pulled down the, uh, the GitHub repo and um, CD'd, in, CD'd into it, um, and we're all set up here. One thing that you might need to do if you're on Kali, um, I don't believe the SMP, SMB module is imported for Python by default, um, so you might need to run um, uh, pip3 import um, pi SMB, um, and that will get this script to work. Um, but I have already installed that for previous um, reasons, so uh, this should work by default. Um, if you do get an error, I would run that to begin with. So what we'll do is we'll do uh, python3 user map underscore script, um, script.py. Um, first uh, argument that's going to be taken is the remote host. So we'll go ahead and oops, don't want that. We'll go ahead and paste in the remote host remote host address, which is 10 10 10 3. Um, we need the remote port, which is 139, um, and then we need our own IP address. So one quick trick if you're using Terminator, you can do uh, Control Shift O, uh, spin up another terminal really quick, and then do I f config you can grab your own ip address come back up here paste that in and then we need to set a uh, listening port which is uh, i like to use 4444 um, and then that is all set so now what we'll do is we will uh, come back over to our terminal on the bottom here um, before we run this we need to have a listener set up so we need to do uh, netcat um, dash nlvp uh, and then the port so nlvp i'll walk you through those uh, options really quick n is for no dns name resolution um, l is to set netcat in listening mode v is for verbose output and then p is going to set the port which is quad four just like we had previously said. So the reason that we didn't run this right away is because we needed, um, it's going to give us code execution, spawn a reverse shell. Um, to grab the reverse shell, we need something that is listening. And that's what this netcat listener is going to do. So we'll go ahead and set the netcat listener to catch our reverse shell. And then we're going to run this Python exploit. 
So it looks like it um, ran and we actually have a connection on the bottom here. So now, um, just to be sure that we do have a connection, we can type who am I? And it looks like we're actually root. Um, so we're not really gonna need to do any privilege escalation for this box in particular. Um, however, one thing that's a good habit to get into um, is to stabilize your shell if you don't have a, um, if you don't have a stable shell um, right off the get-go, which you typically won't. Um, so let's go ahead, we'll do this. It'll just give us a little bit more functionality. Uh, we'll be able to see things a little bit more clearly. We're going to use Python for this, so you guys can kind of already see the uh, the power of Python here. Uh, but we'll do Python dash C, and the dash C is actually going to execute the um, rest of the command here that's put in quotation marks, um, just as an inline uh, Python command. So we'll do Python dash three dash C, and then we're going to import um, Pty um, semicolon, and then we're going to do space Pty dot spawn. And then we'll open the parentheses, double quotes, forward slash bin, forward slash sh, end the double quotes, end our open parentheses, and then a single parenthesis to close off the Python command, and then we'll enter that, and then you guys can see we kind of got a little bit more of a stable shell. So now that we have a little bit more command over the machine, uh, we can ls, maybe do some lsla, see what's going on on this machine here. Um, it looks like we do have a home directory. Um, we also have a root directory, which is definitely something that we want to check out now that we are um, the root user. So we'll cd into root um, and we'll check this out. We'll see if we have anything. And there it is. So that looks like that is the, uh, that's gonna be the root.txt file. Um, I'm not going to uh, cat that out um, just for flag sharing purposes, but this is how you would solve this machine. Um, this is also going to uh, kind of wraps things up and is um, uh, kind of our first example at an easier uh, type of box that might appear um, or type of box that might appear on the OSCP um, exam. Um, now, I think this is a great uh, series just to kind of show you guys what an easier machine on the OSCP might look like. Um, and then we'll progressively get into some more difficult um, uh, boxes to crack, um, some more difficult techniques and processes, um, but feel free to uh, comment, leave me some questions, uh, concerns, things you'd like to see out of this series, um, and let me know. All right, and that was it for this machine today, guys, um, and I will be back again soon with another machine, but thank you guys.